Hey everybody, I'm going to do a channeled um, conversation today, and I had a question, um, <clears throat> it was related, to, the subjects were all interrelated, so um, the question was about Egypt and pyramid power and Anunnaki. So I'm just going to see what images come related to this, um, and I'm going to take a drink of coffee first. <laughs> Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, all right, so, this, so, um, the first thing that I see is a golden teardrop, and it, it's on my third eye, and the golden teardrop falls down, and then, see, I have, I, oh, I literally, every time I'm on doing these channelings, I hold this crystal ball, <laughs> it sounds really corny or maybe silly, but, um, this really does help me to, connects with the eyes on my palms and it's a sphere so there are infinite s I talk about this in other but um, I don't want to distract from what is the wisdom of that is coming to me but um, a teardrop falls down onto my crystal ball it's a golden teardrop and so I rub my crystal ball and the teardrop is sort of slimy or something um, and Let's see. Say they there was a conversation, um, and it was about you know there are no more tears to be shed is what the what the conversation the, what the female voice was saying what was like a motherly voice was saying that and to dry your tear. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's no understanding related to this. Um, that is what I saw. So it fell onto my crystal ball. So let me see what comes next. Visions from afar, what they say. Visions from afar coming to earth. Coming to earth in new ways. Ways that are um, different than others have seen. So ways that are um, in, in metallic ships that come from the sky. Metallic ships with lights. This is a really big deal. Because they had lots of lights on them and people were s sort of amazed by this. What was, um, I talk about this. Um, cylindrical shape. And, in fact, I'm just going to put this on pause because I kind of drew a, a picture and I didn't even know I was doing this. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so this is, I never finished this because I ran out of yellow, but um, this was what I drew. It's like a lot everywhere, but there's something about this geometric shape. See what is these four lines and then this like square, but the sides go inward like a diamond. And then, um, what is this sort of like eyeball here? Um, but it's not this long, it's just shorter and it would just come to right here. Um, but that, um, so this shape, this shape is quite, I mean we've seen this before and there's something to this. Not all spaceships look like this, but um, this is quite similar to the one that I'm seeing coming from the sky. But it has lots of lights around it too. And it has this little one and then a little light on top. So let's see what else comes from this. Um, so, I'm like physically getting really hot for some reason. This hat, like my physical temperature changes sometimes when I do this. So. All right, so now um, let me see. Oh, there's a cat person there. The darks, they have dark, they have black. They're black, the color black. Um, they're... F I, I try to see if they have fur or if they have just black skin and it does appear that they have fur just very short um, haired cat or whatever just short fur um, and they do um, like licking themselves and would even do this this isn't like um, they aren't um, self-conscious about this they're absolutely obsessed with like this orgasmic sensation of tongue to like fur or something so she is sort of in this sort of like um, they're like snobby sort of sensation. Um, these cat people, they have this sort of snobby air to them, but that is literally their personality, is like royal bloodline, um, just sort of um, standing up very tall to be seen by everybody, licking themselves is sort of like, um, almost like high on drugs, licking themselves, and um, 
sort of catty air to them. Um, love to tease or play play mind games or something. That but they're but they're actually they're not. Um, that is all I'm seeing right now. I'm not going to make any judgments here. Let's just see what happens next. Cat person. So this is a lot to do with this. I wasn't going to make an evaluation of what is the definition of Anunnaki. I'm just seeing cat people. And I do know that word is associated with reptilian beings. So um, I'm just going to tell you as the pictures come to me, I'm not I'm trying to influence the images at all. So... Um, sort of leaning against a chair, a cat person licking themselves leaning against a chair. Um, and the chair keeps getting much, much bigger, and the cat person then, um, in comparable size, is getting smaller, but isn't actually shrinking. It's just the chair that is getting absolutely humongous. Um, throne. Throne chair is getting much bigger now. Because people see a uh, people, the the site is on Egypt. Site is here because um, we've come here, because this I, the the colors have come here, and um, and now the Egypt is getting known. Egypt is becoming popular, or famous. Um, people are obsessed with seeing Egypt, seeing this. Um, so it's sort of like um, I'm just gonna stop. Okay, so. That is why this throne chair is getting larger and larger and larger, more popular, more um, filled with gold, more filled with um, adornment, uh, more filled with obsession. It's almost feeding into um, what is a human mind obsessed with itself, becoming obsessed with itself. Cat people are not, um, they, they are um, sort of snobby or like sort of rich sort of personality, um, I'm better than you sort of personality, but they're just like that's just their catty way about them and that sort of feeds into the human ego um, and um, it becomes an obsession. Uh, people become obsessed with what is gold and what is um, power and kingliness or royalty and um, it, it becomes um, a showboat, you know? It's like Las Vegas now in Egypt. Like people want to go and see everything and popularity is what it is. Say, human beings, um, okay just a second. What I saw was um, Earth, and Earth as human beings were in balance um, with with land um, and uh, with spirit and body. And then um, there was a distraction, and people weren't um, in balance anymore with land and body. People became um, obsessed with um, with beyond the earth. They they detach. They literally detached their roots from the earth and started gravitating towards things that weren't um, of the earth anymore. They were of the stars, is what it was. And then the personalities of the stars that were different um, than themselves. Um, th this is all good. This is all good that um, people, it is um, self-exploration is what this is. As, as a giant rainbow conversation, there's nothing evil or bad about human beings trying to um, choose to do the things differently and self-explore. Um, even if it is gravitating away from what was balanced and what was natural and what was all these things. It, we we will come back to a place of balance, okay? It's called a cycle. You have you. What do you do in a cycle? You sort of um, you go in a different direction, and then you self-realize, and then you decide what you want. You know what I mean? And so let's see what what happens next. This is really big about tears and golden tears crying. Um, what is raining from the sky now? Golden tears of change. Um, people embrace these golden tears of change. People are rejoicing in golden tears of change, and that the, that is not a that is literally um, ch change. Money is <laughs> what this is. Um, golden tears of change, um, so uh, life changing, but also changes in financial wealth. This is huge. Um, what becomes golden? Um, Tears of change. I'll let you decide how you want to evaluate that, but it's not. It is a play on words, but it is both. Both of them are correct. So seven. So seven stars. Seven beings. Um, seven beings of change uh, came. Um, there's snake. Um, snake. Um, alligator and um, pink. 
this is okay light is being shed so I can see because they're telling me these things but I can't see them all and um, alligator man um, literally standing upright like a man but has a ginormous literally projectile um, alligator even face so alligator face with the long um, mouth snout is um, literally standing upright and he has um, a crown on his head and it, it is a snake and the snake comes out like this and it's not made of gold it literally looks like a snake being tied around his head and then the snake head it's kinda weird it's sort of like you kill a deer and then you cut the head off and you mount it on your wall it's like he kills a snake and then um, molds it or somehow to this crown and then wears it um, he's very pompous, um, very, uh, sort of, uh, a superior, um, superior ruler, um, a jerk. He's like a snobbish jerk, um, really pompous jerk. Um, I would call him an asshole if I met him in person. <laughs> like, people would, that not everybody would see through, um, through, see through him, um, people would see him as a god, whereas some would see him as just what he is for what he is, is just a pompous jerk. <laughs> but um, it doesn't matter. Um, that's, I'm just describing his personality. And um, he, he is sort of like the big dude on the beach, like, yeah, I'm the big hot dude on the beach. You know, see me, everybody see me, see how awesome I am. I am that dude. Um, that is his personality. Um, you intermix these personalities and then now you start fucking with the human mind. That's literally what it is. Um, you have cat woman um, and her sort of snobby nature, um, which is just the cat way. It's just their cat way. And then you have this sort of pompous um, reptilian brute and um, he's just obsessed with people adoring him, you know? He just loves um, the, uh, the to be adored and then um, to be sort of um, bowed down to and um, worshipped. Like he he feeds off of it, like starving, starved, starvingly hungry for um, for people to be obsessed with him, um, even sexually. Um, sort of loves that. So now you have two personalities here interacting with this place that is becoming so popular. This has a lot to do with this question, um, but they're not saying they're not saying that, um, that, that this was not. That there's sort of um, no evil. I'm not feeling the evil or anything. I'm just feeling personalities, you know, personalities that come in different forms and 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 related to their genetic makeup, not actually of their ego. That that is, you know, that is their genetic makeup and. Um, and so let's see, so they actually do bring wealth of wisdom too. They're not um, just jerks. This is like important that I make note of this, that they were not jerks. Um, they were actually, um, they, ju they sort of loved um, the experience. It was like they took a vacation to a place and everybody loved them there and why leave, you know what I mean? And then they just become, they just, they're just so, people are just so obsessed with them that they just like sort of love it. And, um, but they, but they did bring wisdom here. They actually did bring wisdom and wanted to share sort of the gifts of their, um, w awareness with us. And that does come in the form of pyramids. And it really did become what was, um, uh, people, um, embracing, um, beings from the outer realms. And then um, a sort of a loving co combination of um, relationships, and the, and you take a span of um, time and human beings um, the generations. So let's just say you know you take generations of time and human beings live die really fast. And so um, what do the younger generations grow up to see or know that this is normal? The change raining, you know, the golden tears of change raining down from the sky is normal. You know what I mean? And so, how, so now what happens? Now you've created a ripple in, in the pond, you know, a huge ripple in the pond of how human beings um, develop a new sense of um, being. So let's see what else is happening. 
there's a lot more to this. What is Atlantis even? Um, what is uh, other superpowers is what it's what it feels like um, across the globe. So in different hotspots um, like Vegas, you know, like Las Vegas hotspots superpowers across the earth. And there was even ability to talk to superpowers in different places. So in Atlantis, in Egypt, and um, what I could only describe as Japan. It just is somewhere in Japan or China or some Asian area. Um, I'm looking around to see if there's any other, um, so they're saying like Mayan, Aztec, um, sort of, but they were different. They were not sort of like a, they weren't, um, their personality or the feeling of energy vibration from that location has a different sensation to Egypt was sort of like Las Vegas. Um, Atlantis was sort of like, um, <clears throat> so different in their balance so different it wasn't Las Vegas because people it was sort of like um, so harmonious but so um, they weren't it was different each of these hot spots has a different um, sort of energetic feeling to it um, and that they were able to talk to each other somehow um, they're telling me that it has a lot to do with um, pyramids and what is this eyeball too see that um, <clears throat> but the, 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 they had, they were ginormous telephones. Do you need a telephone as giant as a pyramid? But you can't deny that these pyramids, um, are legit. And they exist in more places than just Egypt. And this is huge, because what I'm trying to make sense, well, did Atlantis have pyramids too? Or, but, the, but, um... I'm just going to stop and get back into channeling the images, okay? <clears throat> okay, I'm going back to this um, alligator guy. <clears throat> snake. The snake symbol is, this is huge. Um, he had um, roped up the snake. He, he felt that he controlled the snake. The snake is, um, okay. This is like really seriously big for me because um, I people don't have people um, the balance of understanding with what snake is um, isn't people see snakes as evil because snakes are you know they're poisonous but guess what is snake poison actually cures a lot of um, illnesses snakes shed their skin and become new again. Snakes are not evil. They, they are both the balance of the dark and the light. If you can look into the dark and find the light, now suddenly you have, you are in oneness with both. Now suddenly you are, um, you are different. You are, you are reborn. You are new. You are, you are, um, sort of the kundalini, um, soothsayer. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Um, it's super to be able to love love the ter love in fear and and then fear in return loves you that's the only way you could describe it and so pompous jerk is like, i don't mean it he, he's not pompous jerk it's just he loved being adored that's like literally what it was he loved being adored um but he also was sort of like i control the snake now i control the snake and so he shows that to everybody that i am in control of the snake i'm more powerful than the snake and um this is a huge deal. I don't understand the huge deal yet, um, but this symbol that they wear around their head is um, symbolic of the snake, and um, th this is huge. I'm not sure um, what this means as of yet. We'll see what comes next. I'm not going to say any more right now. Okay, let's see what they're going to So my snake mother, so my spirit guide who is a snake, um, is a woman um, and also a snake, but she coming as um, what is uh, literally a ginormous snake and instead of um, you know how the king cobra has this part that comes out like this that is her human f sort of body um, and sort of even gown or something um, but she she's so she she's uh, like so evil but yet so so that if you can look it this is so hard to describe because there's nothing to, there's no such thing as terror it is only in the humanness to be afraid. So if the human can override their fear and to um, see what is um, behind the veil of fear, and they will find love, and they will find love unimaginable. Um, so you can't um, allow the illusion or the deception um, to be fear. 
you have to override fear and then when you override your fears now you can be new and now you can be embraced by love and um, guidance and um, glory and sort of um, rebirth is what it is this is so huge because snakes have such a huge voice um, in Egypt um, but Atlantis as well a sort of snake power um, she's coming right now um, so let's see what <clears throat> She's showing me that I have a crown on my head of gold and that I wear the snake. And I am the snake mother, is what she says. Um, now we are one. Now we see together. Now we see what is high and mighty um, uh, on the throne. Now we see together um, to look out, to see this, what world we have created. Um, but you see through the eyes of the snake, and the snake eyes are red. The snake eyes glow red um, it, because of um, sort of change. So, so um, what feels like defiled or like raped or something? Um, something had to change though. It had to create a new cycle. What is the eight? A new sensation of infinity um, had to be reborn. Um, and that was what came. But uh, let's see. So void voice of snake, um, voice of snake, so this is getting really weird, um, um, everything is changing now, what is, um, a very dark man, and we are, we are, I am, uh, he, okay, this is like so super energy, is like hardcore energy hitting me, so it's almost hard to talk, um, but, uh, what is super, a superman, um, He's a dark, he's in the dark right now, and he's holding this crystal ball with me. And honestly, he's like becoming um, more light so that I can see who he is. And it, I'm not gonna lie, but it, it looks just like Cryon. And um, I didn't know that that was gonna happen. <laughs> Um, so, I like, I, um, since I've discovered Cryon, I, like, he's actually, like, my best friend, like, one of my friends, so I talk to him all the time, but I don't really, I don't channel him, because it's not, like, my, I don't, I don't feel like, um, I don't know, <laughs> I'm, like, super, I didn't know that was gonna happen, so I'm, like, sort of, my wheelbarrow is, like, riding on the side, and I don't know how to get it balanced again. Um, so super using his like heavy lead weight energy to like balance me and relax me. <laughs> so so um, showing me the universe and traveling through space. He is Cryon is doing this. Um, sort of glowing a blue light. Um, that his is sort of in the shape of a man, but like glowing blue right now. Um, he also is sort of like a metallic, but um, he's very much so blue right now. Um, hands out sort of like on my head here and then we're traveling through space and I'm um, showing me all of these galaxies and all of these places um, um, so we are traveling very fast although it feels so slow <laughs> but we but that is maybe how enormous we are I don't understand the projection of um, we are literally traveling past a galaxy like that <laughs> Um, so I could see, so one after the other, and then um, traveling into what is a void of dark and nothingness, where there's no, even, not even stars there. He says, create new. Yeah, create new. Create a new dream. Create a new dream. Well, when you have a blank page, you have, you have the ability to create new dreams. You can create whatever you want. And he's really, um, it's like, not about Egypt or about any of this history anymore. It's about creating a new history. It's about creating a new new dream and new future. And he's like really a sort of like a touching every single human being on this planet. Um, inspiring every human being to open their third eye um, with the energy of some, some beautiful gift that he gives every human being. Um, and um, to open their third eye and to inspire you to be an artist, to create your own new dreams. Um, that uh, exploring the history um, is we need to explore the, 
explore our dreams and our hearts and um, and write that down on the page and start creating a new universe, a new um, galaxy, a new world for um, us to explore. It's really, that's what he's saying. Um, what is sort of creating like a circular lead ball um, in this nothingness, sort of like a planet made out of lead? Um, he said this is the development of a dream, um, something new. He says we need to we need to develop new things. Um, but in, but what is develop creating it with love, not creating it with um, speculation or uh, or emotions that are um, um, evaluating somebody's pompous or something like that. But literally letting go of all of those sort of um, humanness ways. Um, and just being free of, of that um, sort of evaluation um, and then doing it differently as, as just doing it with honesty that's what it is doing it in a genuine honest way creating newness um, in a genuine honest way this is super um, what is uh, roots coming from my heart and embracing um, this image of darkness um, so that the love from my heart creates a portal and it feeds into the stream and it feeds something um, of love into the stream. It's really about sharing love um, and creating new dreams um, that are that are gifts of love that we give to ourselves. Literally, is what he's saying. Um, I'm not sure why he's shown up. Um, so okay, so I've been ex so I haven't talked about this, and he's like wanting me to talk about this. <clears throat> I've been exploring um, doing things that are, I've never done before. So. Um, exploring um, creation and um, so human beings are really interested in discovering our human history and our relationships with alien beings and what has taken place here and how this has all happened um, but human beings don't try to comprehend who and what is their soul who, who are you who are you like when you look in the mirror you see yourself as a person but who is your soul? What was your soul doing? Do you know how you, when your soul was born? Did you know how that happened? Um, so I've been exploring my soul um, as sort of uh, at the beginning of creation and um, seeing a, the universe itself manifest and how I was um, a part of that. And um, Cryon was a part of that too. And there are other, oh, other souls that are also a part of that. And we are trying to bring the balance to Earth again, our souls incarnating and bringing the balance here. And um, trying to help human beings remember, um, remember that it is more than just about today, the, today's body. It is about infinite um, years of time, like the span expansion of an entire universe. What is more important is knowing, is it knowing what happened in Egypt or is it knowing literally what was the inspiration that created the entire universe, like literally. What, now think about that. A universe that, you know, that had a beginning, you know, but it is an infinite universe. What inspired the, the gift of reincarnation in the first place? And that's, that's what he's, um, I've been exploring um, what is <clears throat> the darkest um, spectrums and then the, the brightest light spectrums. What is the highest um, upper decks of um, the spiritual realms? It literally feels that way. It feels like super, super high up. Like, like I couldn't. You, you would have. You would take an elevator there, and you would be on the elevator forever to try to get to it. It's so high up. Um, I don't even know how they hear me up there, but they do um, because I am connected with that place too. My soul was born there, and um, my soul had this sort of attraction. Um, to creating and um, sort of merging with souls and creating new souls and um, creating um, I was like obsessed with with creation and seeing what can come when you you put red and blue together now you get purple you put green and yellow together you know I was obsessed with with seeing what what combinations new combinations could be created and then just sort of adoring everything loving every single soul and creation like to such degree that it was um, insane like the depths of love that I, I had for creation and I and then sort of like um, had this desperate need to um, explore creations beyond my own soul home. This is all about before even um, physical creation took place. 
I'm sort of asking if, if I need to keep talking about this. Um, this is this, this everything has so, um, I'm at, it's like something having to do with pyramid and energy now. Um, where does that, where do, where does pyramid energy come from? Do you know? Um, so that's what we are talking about this for some reason. And so, um, in the exploration of um, cre being the joyful creator being that I am, I, um, I had to go to new places um, because I was obsessed with creating new things and I, I wanted to see what else was in the existence of creation, you know. So my star literally came um, to the diving board of my home or whatever and jumped off and literally went way down and sailed all the way down, 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 um, so far down. It's a, I don't even know how you could ever get um, so far down. And then um, that is where I found Cryon. It's literally what it is. And then somehow um, that is sort of some beautiful thing. Event took place. And when you take what is heavy lead weight, and then you take super um, high, you take super low, and you take super high, and you combine them together, now suddenly you manifest something so unimaginable, uh, um, is so different and so new that now you start creating, uh, manifesting a whole, whole universes. <clears throat> whole orbs that are universes, not orbs that are just souls, but orbs that are like absolute universes. Um, and, and manifesting reincarnation even. Um, that's hardcore. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Is, is that's hardcore. So, um, so what does this have to do? So, saying all seeing eye again, on the top of the pyramid, people don't know that on the top of the pyramid there was sort of like an all seeing eyeball. Um, what would be like a, 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 something like this, I don't, something like that circle with, um, some, something like that. Um, and it's always red, every time I see it, it is a red beacon sort of thing. Um, uh, this is serious, um, hmm, let me see. I have a red beacon too. I have a star that is to the top um, of my, so here's my head, and then uh, floating above my head is a star. Um, my star, though, isn't showing that it is red, though. It's showing that it is white. Um, so I'm just trying to understand. This is a psychic center. This is a psychic center. Um, people can psychically interact um, the, through this thing. Um, it, is a it is like your cell phone wire or something like that. Um, this is everybody has this gift to interact with every single being and species and everything. Um, it, the universe isn't as big as you think it is. It is very small, in fact. It doesn't feel small when you're incarnated as a human being. It feels absolutely enormous. Um, and this has to do with Egypt and communication as well. Um, this has to do with communication in Atlantis um, and in, in this Aztec world and the Mayan world and this um, J Japanese um, land area. I don't. Um, <clears throat> so something happened there too. It's sort of people communicating across the globe. Isn't that what we are doing today, he says. Don't we communicate across the globe through Google and YouTube and um, instant messengers? Isn't that what we are doing? But we have manifested it wrong, we've manifested it differently. Because of our obsession with these tears of gold raining down upon us, we became obsessed with that. Um, the physical. We became obsessed with this physical gifts of gold. Um, and then, uh, and then we lost track of our um, sensation of the psychic sort of thing. Um, we have to. Re you have to actually. Um, this sounds really crazy. Crying is telling me this. He says, um, "You chose gold. Now you give your gold back, literally." So, like you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, how they stole all that gold and then they became sort of um, demonic in that they couldn't die and they lost um, their sensation. They couldn't um, satisfy their hunger. They couldn't satisfy their sexual needs. They couldn't satisfy anything because they had taken all this gold. And now they're trying to recover all the pieces of gold to give it back. So that way, because they realized that being in oneness with their bodies was more important than having all of the gold or the riches of, of the world. And so this is the same, he says, this is absolutely the same. Human beings have to choose to give back the gold that they took. Um, and that was um, from that many thousands of years ago. Do you remember what happened in Egypt? Were you there in Egypt? Do you know if you were there in Egypt? Um, you have to give your gold back. You, you have to give your gold back, and then you have to choose to be 
um, and oneness again with the earth. You have to. This is the only way. Um, and then you you discover then that you are your own cell phone. You are your own Google and YouTube and everything. And um, they manifest these big, be beautiful. He says they're bi big, beautiful um, creations. They sort so sort of like the giant throne getting larger, 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 sort of showcasing this sort of like pompous um, sort of this is how awesome and big we are. But but more so than that, because they wanted to be seen from space. They wanted to be seen from outer space. That is what this was. And so did the Aztecs and Mayans. And so did these. Um, people in these places wanted to, this was how they communicated with outer space is these um, structures um, they were they were beacons or ways for um, set your ships down here or something like that is the only way I can describe it or if they built their pyramids in this way it was um, a symbol to Anunnaki or um, beings from space um, cat aliens and all that stuff um, that that we are in oneness with you, you are safe to come here, we welcome you here, is literally what it can only be described as. Um, so, let's see. But what is the shape of the pyramid, and what is that? Um, Alright. Bringing it on down to the shape itself. I'm choosing, I'm telling them, let's talk about the shape itself, and why is the shape so important? Hmm. I'm actually running out of time right now, and so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to go there. <laughs> so let's see if we can. <clears throat> um, so seeing a golden pyramid, pyramid made out of gold. So what? Let's just imagine those pyramids actually had a coat of gold on them. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Um, so they're shining and um, they're covered in gold and. <clears throat> There's this odd thing on that. I mean, I'm still seeing the thing on. Um, it's the little, the stem with the little ball on top. Um, that's the only way. It's so this. It's like a crystal ball. It's literally what it's sort of like. It's a little crystal ball and sort of an antenna um, on top of the very top of the pyramids. Like, what do you put on the top of your Christmas tree? You put a star up there, right? Um, why do you do that? <laughs> His sort of these things come from places like you actually know about these things somehow inside of your genetic makeup you still do these things and you don't even realize it um, so <laughs> people I'm showing like I'm seeing like um, cell phone antennas have like this thing in this little like a very flat spot on top or like some little piece on the top but, I mean, isn't it to protect the antenna or something? And then um, you have a car antenna, and then it has, like, a little thing on top. Like, um, I don't know. It, people put balls on top of their antennas. Like, there's something weird about this. It's sort of weird. It's sort of like a cat thing, even. It, that, it's got that sort of catty sort of um, relationship to it. It's, like, weird. <laughs> Um, it's sort of like knowing, not knowing that you are doing something, but doing it, um, they find that very attractive. Um, that you, they're like, ooh, they're doing something that we know why they're doing it, but they don't even know why they're doing it. <laughs> it's like this weird, catty, like, seductive, like, tease state that they get into. Um, uh, the cat woman is literally what is um, interacting with me. No wonder I'm getting all these catty vibes. Um, sort of, sort of, very sexual, like catty, sort of teasing, sort of way about them. Um, she really, really wants to help me see and understand um, the gift of the pyramid because it is their gift to us. She says that clearly. This is our gift to us. So. Um, so, see, um, wow, so, so the feeling is so beautiful, the feeling is so much love, the feeling is so sacred, the symbol of the pyramid, um, we, um, we praise or give thanks, um, to sort of this geometrical shape, or this, the god of, um, this shape, which is the pyramid, um, <laughs> there's wealth, um, within the pyramid knowledge, um, so, so all seeing eye in, in the pyramid um, are in oneness. Uh, you see through the eye of the pyramid. Um, what is um, literally like looking through the bottom of the pyramid and out um, through the tiny little point at the end, and that um, is where the wealth of wisdom, wisdom, like you can see through that for some reason, sort of 
the only way I could describe it. Um, now they're showing... Obviously, I don't, I do not, um, this has nothing to do with me researching dollar bills or anything like that. I don't, um, I didn't know this was going to happen, but they are showing me what is the dollar bill, um, with the pyramid and the eye, and they're like, our money, they're, they're like, our symbol is on your, your money. Um, that's like a huge freaky deal, um, because we're talking again about gold raining down, you know, change this change um, thing and <clears throat> even now you worship us with your money um, she's not saying that as a good thing so to speak they don't want you to worship your money we want you to worship what is the symbol of the pyramid the gift that is the pyramid um, what is this geometric shape that gives you wisdom and gives you life it is literally like the elixir of life is the pyramid itself um, what is um, on, onyx or um, there's something about that shape where it's sort of like a cross and then there's a circle like this like a person's head or something I can't even quite remember the shape but I'm hearing like onyx or something symbol of life or something like that um, but um, also the color of it is black that is the, the they're like a really aroused by the fact that is the color of their fur or their that is their species color is black and find it find it very arousing um, so that is the symbol of life. Um, it's sort of like arousing that human beings would um, find them to adore them to, to this degree. Um, it's sort of, um, but it's not, it's, in, it's just in their sort of way of, of their expression. They're not, they don't mean, they, they don't mean, that, that is just the way they react to it. Um, it's the only way I can describe it. Um, and so that is pyramids. They say, y you, there's so much you can learn from the pyramid itself. There's so much you can discover. Um, do not worship us on, do not worry, that's sort of very sad. Um, this money, the dollar bill is very sad that she sees a pyramid on it with the eye. Because she knows, um, she knows what that means. Um, so, <clears throat> change. It, it, it means change, she's saying. All of this means change. The whole voice of this video is change. Not change is in money now, but change is in it is time to change. It, the dollar bill is change, right? So hand back your change it, as, the, as you choosing to change everything. You, you give back your change in order to change everything. And so when she says change um, associated to the dollar bill, um, now she is saying it as, as change this, um, please change this. Please do, do please give back this um, and uh, to your ancestors and then and, and, and go back. Um, be, be a balance, be balanced or um, it has to do with finding the wisdom through the pyramid itself. Like she's, she's very like, the pyramid will heal you, the pyramid will change everything, the pyramid will give you the wisdom that you need. There's so much that needs to change. Um, it got out of hand or something like that. Um, so I'm supposed to stop here. Slow down a little bit. Um, sort of. So I made that um, video about Nibiru and um, the Catwoman having a red stone. Um, but I never saw it was on her physical body. I just, But um, she, had, she showed me this red stone that was on her third eye. And now the red, um, sort of like the red beacon um, from the spaceship, and then sort of um, what is the, sort of um, I don't know something having to do with red is important, um, and ruby and um, sort of ruby jewels uh, glowing and um, sort something really valuable to knowing about red um, and ruby and um, associating um, sort of with that. Uh, this is huge. I don't, I don't know, um, I don't know what this is about, but it's, it, this is important to know about this, is what she's saying. Um, alright, I, I absolutely can't talk any longer, I, I have to go. <laughs> I actually, I like, work a job, so I've got to go to work now, um, but that's all I can say. I hope, um, this video's been valuable. I'd really like to venture back into the sort of the snake, um, because I have past life in Egypt. 
and I was quite a speaker um, then, but I channeled in wisdom from the snake mother, the goddess snake, and I did so in Atlantis too, so I've always been really aligned with the serpent energy, and the serpent energy that is um, the symbol of the eight, you know, the infinite. I sort of worship um, what is the gift of rebirth, the gift of um, re renewal and newness, and how do you get rebirth unless you choose reincarnation? And then when you choose reincarnation, you get the gift um, of rebirth. Every time you um, are born and then you die and you are born again, your soul actually goes through this like um, immaculate transformation, absolutely immaculate transformation. And our humanness would not um, even be able to comprehend how beautiful it is. And um, sort of, um, I have this sort of, so whether you are poor or rich or, you know, whatever nightmare you've endured as a human being, when it comes to this exchange, you you will be so born born um so imma reborn immaculately so reborn into the spirit world um is this immaculate um new new sort of force where you get to remerge with the sort of God source or whatever and then um it is such a beautiful thing that you get to do this this is like the superior ultimate gift and then um. And then you get reborn into the physical, and so then you live a life again, and then you get reborn into the spiritual, and then reborn into the... F it's, it's sort of... I still am learning about this, and, and from the human perspective, unfortunately. It's not as, like, amazing as how you would understand it as a soul, you know what I mean? It is so, so simplistic. Um, and the humanness has so many feelings towards the thought of reincarnation, you know. This was quite, um, there was quite a lot of wisdom related to this, um, in Egypt even. Um, and it comes from these cat people. Um, you will see them, um, when you see the Egyptian statues of the cat, that, that is a picture of me, is basically the only way she, she, this cat woman is telling, is like, she adores that we have loved her. Um, and, um, and not in a snobby or a way, but um, actually like a really balanced sort of like, that is very meaningful to me, sort of way. Um, and so I'm sure, sort of curious to know more about what the snake, the snake representation. And I haven't been, I don't, I'm out of time, so I can't go into that. So we'll just save it for another day. Um, but, um, thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it, um, interesting. Um, <laughs> more to come.